If you want to use a class with your Swift UI data, which you will want to do if that data should be shared across more than one view, then Swift UI gives us two property wrappers that are useful, at observed object and at environment object. We'll be looking at environment objects later on, but for now let's focus on observed objects. Here we have some code that creates a user class and shows that user data in a view. However, that code won't work as intended. We've marked the user property with at state, which is designed to track local structs rather than external classes. As a result, we can type into the text fields, but the text view won't be updated. To fix this, we need to tell SwiftUI when interesting parts of our class have changed. By interesting parts, I mean parts that should cause SwiftUI to reload any views that are watching our class. It's possible you might have lots of properties inside your class, but only a few should be exposed to the wider world in this way. Our user class has two properties, first name and last name. Whenever either of those two changes, we want to notify any views that are watching our class that a change has happened, so they can be reloaded. We can do this using the at published property wrapper, like this, at published here and here. At published is more or less half of at state. It tells Swift that whenever either of those two properties changes, it should send an announcement out to any Swift UI views that are watching that they should reload. Now, how do those views know which classes might send out those change notifications? Well, that's another property wrapper, at observed object, which is the other half of at state. It tells Swift UI to watch a class for any change announcements. So change the user property to this, at observed object var user. Now that we're using at observed object, our code will no longer compile. It's not a problem. And in fact, it's expected and easy to fix. The at observed object property wrapper can only be used on types that conform to the observable object protocol. This protocol has no requirements. And really all it means is we want other things to be able to monitor this for changes. So modify the user class to add the observable object protocol. Our code will now compile again. And even better, it will now actually work again. You can run the app and see the text view update when either text field is changed. As you've seen, rather than just using at state to declare local state, we now take three steps. First, make a class that conforms to the observable object protocol. Second, mark some properties with at published so any views using the class get updated when they change. And third, create an instance of our class using the at observed object property wrapper. The end result is we have our state stored in an external object and we can now use that object in multiple views and have them all point to the same values.